All right, good morning. Kids, Place Church of Huntington Beach. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Are we ready to worship? All right. Father, we love you so much. We thank you so much that we can come before your throne freely to worship you and be in your word, God. We just pray that your Holy Spirit would be in the midst of each and every one of us today, God. Whatever we walk in here with today, Lord, we just thank you so much that you carry that burden for us, God. So we ask that you'd bind the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you, you and your victory would be right here, right now. You say where two or more are gathered in your name, then you're present. So thank you, Father God, that you're present with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. Put our hands together. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcome. He has done great things. He has done great things. Yeah. Oh, here.
Lord Jesus. We just thank you that we're going to keep praising you and worshiping you. You can continue to stand, kneel, whatever the Lord wants you to do this morning. You're here with him and him alone. It's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only, great. your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth, all the earth will shout your
sounds so beautiful. Praise God. So, Father, this time... Actually, you guys, <laughs> this is a time where you can come up and just bring your heart to the Lord, bring your prayers, bring your praise, just come and be before him. We just want to call up all of our prayer warriors to the front, bring anything to him. He's here, he's present, he wants to hear from you, he is our blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood, and what he did for me. My Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail.
Hey, before you sit down, say hi to each other. <laughs>
All right. Good morning, his place. I love how much love there is in this room. You guys always make my day with your smiles and just the happy conversations that are going on. All right, my friends, we are going to move into a time of giving. We're going to do our offering. And we have four ways to give here at His Place. We have the envelopes and the baskets on the tables. We have our website at hisplace.com slash HB. We have the QR codes in our weekly bulletins that you should have gotten at the door. And we have the app that you can get on your phone. It makes it super, super easy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray over our offering and just that it would bless this church. So let's go ahead and bow our hearts and bow our heads. Father God, thank you for bringing us all into this room together today. Lord, following worship, we want to worship you with every area of our lives, Lord. You are the king and you are worthy of all of our worship and all of our praise. So as we give this tithe and offering, I pray that we would give with generous spirits and that we would give from the bottom of our hearts, Lord God, and that you would use this money for your purpose and your will, Lord God. We love you and we thank you for the goodness that you do in our lives. Amen. If it's your first time here with us, we would like to get to know you. So go ahead and fill out one of the connection cards that should be in one of the seats in front of you. All right, we have a couple of announcements. Join us on Saturday, October 28th from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. for our harvest feast, for our harvest fest, sorry, not a harvest feast, it's not going to be a feast, but it's going to be a fest, it's going to be a good time. So <laughs> it's for the neighborhood and the church. Uh, we're going to do it in the His Place parking lot. We're going to have a jump house for the kids, but honestly, you might catch me in there too. We're going to have games and a craft. We're going to have food and more. We're going to celebrate God's goodness and provision as we welcome this fall season. Um, we're also taking candy donations. There's a big red bucket at the back of the room. If you're going to donate candy, we prefer that you donate non-chocolate candies, even though chocolate is so, so delicious. It's going to melt in the sun. So if you want to donate, it's going to be back there for you. We also have sign-ups in the back of the room. We have Miss Barbara back there with a sign-up list. She's just like a beautiful angel. If you're interested in volunteering to help us out, for the Harvest Fest, you can go ahead and find her at the back after service, and she can tell you more about how you can help and serve. Um, secondly, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And we are so, so, so appreciative for our pastoral staff here. Pastor Rudy and Pastor Barb are such a blessing to not only me personally, but to this church at large. Like, if you've been touched any way, by their guidance and their leadership and their love. Let them know. We're going to have some note cards that you can fill out at the connection table outside. If there's maybe a message that struck a special chord in your heart or maybe something that they've helped you out with along the way, let them know. Be specific. Be loving. This is our chance to get to, to re like, you can tell them any day. You can tell them, hey, you're awesome. You can totally tell them that after service, but this is just a really intentional way that you can let them know how you love them. If you'd like to give monetarily for that, too, you can do so um, by cash or online. Um, on the app, you can select other or mm, pastor appreciation on the pull-down menu. And then October 29th, we're going to be hosting a celebration immediately following service with a delicious lunch to appreciate our pastoral staff. All right. If you are a volunteer in any ministry here at his place, we're going to have an all-ministry volunteer meeting on Sunday, October, or not October, uh, Sunday, November 5th. Lunch will be served, and it's a good chance for you to connect with um, the staff here and just to maybe see where some of the needs are and have your questions asked or have your questions answered. Um, men of his place, on Saturday, November 11th at 8 a.m., your campus skills are needed. Uh, come join us for fellowship and service toward maintaining the church grounds and completing the needs and tasks around the campus. Bring a friend and enjoy fellowship and community and service. We look forward to seeing you there. All right, let's go ahead and welcome up Mr. Pastor Rudy. Thank you, thank you. And if you didn't turn around and see Pastor Barb with her halo on and her wings and the sign-up sheet for next Saturday, you missed it. I saw it. Um, and I'm sure she'll be happy to, to, to put that back on for you. 
Uh, this Saturday, Harvest Fest is one of, one of two opportunities that we take throughout the year to engage the community uh, in, a, in a, a fun and impactful way. So if you, if you haven't been involved in that in years past, I encourage you to, to come out early and uh, you know, help to set up and tear down, bring your car to trunk or treat. We can, we can decorate that out, right? Bounce house. Uh, we tried, we, we thought about getting a dunk tank, um, but somehow Pastor Barb said that was too expensive. So I was like, okay, darn it. I don't have to be in the, in the dunk tank. So that's, that's great. Cause they would have put ice in the water for me. And I was not, <laughs> I was not about that. Um, but how about that worship this morning? How about it? Right, God's God is so timely with bringing us into worship, even even in the song selection that takes place maybe like like three or four weeks back. Right, we're gonna sing in the middle of a storm, louder and louder, louder than even our unbelief. God, we're gonna sing as loud as we possibly can because we're gonna raise our hallelujah, because life doesn't stop happening, and sometimes when life happens, it ca- it, it brings us into places where we where we question kind of where we are or what it is that he has for us. And I was talking with some friends last week because we're in the book of Philippians and I was just pondering on the Apostle Paul as he's sitting in his jail cell. I was like, you know, I wonder if the Apostle Paul, even from the confines of his jail cell, as he's writing letters of encouragement to the church in Philippi, if he, if he questioned or wondered if he was operating in God's will at that time. And what we learned just a couple weeks ago in Philippians chapter 1 where he says, hey, look, my, my circumstances actually serve to advance the gospel. My, my, my circumstances, the, 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 the struggles that I'm experiencing today in this moment actually serve to advance the gospel. But you know what? It, it took the Apostle Paul probably 25, close to 30 years to even come to that realization in his discipleship, right? Once Jesus got a hold of him, he said, yes, I'm all for it. Let's go. What, what does that road look like? It took him 12, 15 years before he set out on his missionary journeys, right? So, so all of that to say that as we sing in the, in, the, in the middle of our storms, louder than the unbelief, louder than anything that the devil could throw at us with his fiery darts, that our journey takes time. This journey is a process. So I want you to be encouraged in that today. If you if there if there's if there's nothing more than you hear from our from our uh, worship gathering this morning, take the encouragement that that the Lord knows you and that you know him and we're going to sing louder and louder in our worship and our praise unto him. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome. If it's your first time here, we're a church family and a community of faith that exists to express the love and the hope of Jesus to broken and blended families and individuals. And we believe that the church is not a museum for the saints, but we're a beacon of light to the lost. The sign outside says we're the perfect place for imperfect people, and we're all flawed and imperfect. Amen? We've been in a series entitled Rejoice. We've come through the year in Rediscover, Refresh, Renew, and now for the last quarter of the year, we're in a series called Rejoice as we step into the world of the Apostle Paul for these first few weeks as he sits in his prison cell in Rome awaiting the uncertainties of life. Like what would come to him or of him face to face with the charges that are against him? What would, what would happen to him? He was unsure and, and um, uh, just didn't have any, any understanding of what it was that was going to take place outside of that. But his faith in the Lord was that the Lord would deliver him through that. And prior to this, Paul and his companions began the church in Philippi on his second missionary journey, which, which as we read about last week or last year in the, in the book of Acts, as we went on that journey with Paul through the region, this was his first church established on the European continent. The Philippian church had sent a gift to Paul as he sat in prison with Epaphroditus. And Paul writes a letter to them for their gift and to encourage them in their faith. You might remember last week in chapter 1, Paul reminded us not to worry, that his circumstances behind bars were actually, like I mentioned, they're serving to advance the gospel in the darkest of places. Key words in the book of Philippians we're going to see are joy, rejoice, 
rejoice in the good times or rejoice in all circumstances? He says we're going to rejoice in all circumstances and that the way that we get to rejoice, the way that we get to find joy, the, the way that we get to sing louder and louder in the middle of the storm is through our direct relationship that we have with Christ Jesus. Paul came to his his understanding of rejoicing in the good times and the bad times specifically through his personal relationship with with Jesus the Messiah. Yesterday we started emotionally healthy discipleship. If you were in that class, uh, thank you for coming. If you weren't in that class and you want to step into it, there, there's there's still time. Uh, it's it's eight weeks of of Saturday morning classes. But we start in emotionally healthy spirituality, and then next year we'll move into emotionally healthy relationships. And they set it up that way because we got to get this right first, right? We have to get our spirituality right first so that we can enter into proper relationships with each other. Like my wife, God bless her, on our first date, right, in uh, one of the coffee shops in the Orange Circle, it's still there. I just can never remember the name of the coffee shop. She asked if I love Jesus. And I said, you know, we, we met on ChristianMingle.com. Like, I mean, isn't that like, isn't that like a given? You'd be surprised, right? You'd be surprised. It's not a given if you met, you know. But her words were, if you don't love Jesus, then you won't know how to love me. And I was right, you know. I'm like, you, 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 you special. We're going to, whoo, yeah. That was so good. And the, the emotionally healthy spirituality starts there because if we don't love Jesus and follow him, then sometimes the way that we interact with each other is not in a godly manner. Amen? Next year, our word for the year is going to be unity, right, as we step into the election year. And, and, and the mudslinging begins, and, and, and things start to separate as a country. We have to stand firm in that and be, and be unified. And Paul understood this. He understood this, 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 this component to his joy in, in finding uh, rejoicing in his circumstances because he, was, he had a direct and true relationship with Jesus Christ. And people today definitely and desperately want to seek this joy or seek this happiness, but we're tossed and turned by things like successes or failures or inconveniences. Christians, Paul expresses, are to be joyful in every circumstance, even when things are not going the way that we planned, even when we feel like complaining, even when no one else is joyful. Christ still reigns supreme, and we still know him, and he still knows us, and so we get to rejoice at all times. Although our lives have us sometimes in perceived jail cells at times, with little hope on the horizon, we follow Christ. He is the light at the end of our road. He is the, the, the bright, shining light that, that we look up to in the midst of, of turbulent times or when things feel dark around us. Um, there was, a, a, I read last week a story about a receptionist in a doctor's office who had a serious case of the grumpies. Anybody familiar with cases of the, of the grumpies? This man was going into the doctor's office, and he tells the, re, tells the receptionist that he has a sore on his chin, and he wants to see the doctor. And, and so she says, okay, go up the hallway, open the first door on your right, take all your clothes off, and wait for the doctor. And the man's like, well, wait a minute, it's a sore on my chin. And she cut him off even before he could get there. She's like, up the hallway, first door on the right, take your clothes off and wait for the doctor. And he says, but, but, but ma'am, and she, and she sent him anyway. And so the guy obeys and he goes and he goes to that door, he opens it, and there's another guy in the room already sitting there in his boxers, right? And so the man says, says you know what, I, I, um, I, can you believe that receptionist? I only had this sore on my chin. I don't understand. And, and the guy says, tell me about it. I'm the UPS guy. <laughs> I'm the UPS guy. Like, that receptionist could use a little bit more joy in her life. How about you? Like we learned about last week, the Bible has a lot to say about happiness. It speaks of this indomitable joy 
as a fruit of God's spirit welling up in the life of the believer. Joy that runs deeper and stronger because it is anchored not in our circumstances. It's not anchored in our successes, but it's anchored in the love of God and the person of Jesus. And the Apostle Paul had a lot to say about that kind of joy. And even though he was in chains 24 hours a day, awaiting trial and possible execution, Paul wrote a letter to the church in Philippi that radiates joy. The words joy or rejoice appear no less than 16 times in the four short chapters of the book of Philippians. In fact, the whole theme of the book, he, he, uh, he solves in chapter 4. We're not getting there today, but it'll be up on your screens. It says, always be joyful in the Lord. I say it again, be joyful. That's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. And last week, we surveyed chapter 1 where Paul reveals that by focusing on partnerships, positivity, and purpose, we can experience more joy in our lives. And we learned that our brains uh, can trend towards positive things or they can trend towards negative things. Right? They can trend towards positivity in the same manner that our brains may have learned to train, been trained towards negativity. And when I was going through my mess years ago, some of you know the story, the wreckage of my divorce, I tried to isolate myself, and in those dreadful circumstances, I couldn't even make my way to church as the guilt and shame was overwhelming for several weeks. Can anybody relate? The guilt and the shame sometimes keeps us isolated and in our beds and not willing to move. But then my phone rang, and I chose to answer it. And my predecessor, Pastor Ed, he says that I don't get to let the devil win. He says that I don't get to isolate. And he said these words to me that maybe you've heard me say before, but he says that there's healing in serving others. And he was right. And so if you're taking notes in your, in your bulletin today, our big idea, it'll be up on your screens here for you today, it's that joy can be found in the selfless service to God and others the selfless service to God and others. My separation and my divorce took place right about this time, just before the holidays. And one of the first things that I allowed myself to step back into was coming here on a Thanksgiving Thursday. And I hung out, and I served others, and I connected with friends, and I went home feeling a little bit better about my circumstances. When we isolate, we allow the devil to steal our joy and he steals and kills and destroys. We talk about this often, that we are a church family. We are a church community, a community of faith that does life together because it's this piece right here, this component, this across, across the table from each other, this connection, this feeling the energy and, 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 and seeing the expressions on our faces and hearing the, the, the tones of our voices that allows effective communication to take place that is different from what you experience in your text messaging or in your social media feeds, right? Because you might read the communication differently than it was intended to be sent, amen? So we come together to, to do that, and we rejoice in our good times and our bad times. And our community of faith sometimes has ups and downs of life. Joy is found in the selfless service to others and in the solidarity that is the unity of our faith. So here we are in Philippians chapter 2. It'll be up on your screens here for you. There's Bibles all around your seats. If you need a Bible, please take a Bible. It's our gift to you. We opened up the blinds today. Anybody notice that? Yeah. Right? Woo! You like that, huh? Yeah, we can see, you know, right? Even though we've got lights, we can see. So hopefully you're able to, to, to see into your larger print Bibles a little bit better today. Open up your phone apps, uh, if you will, to your Bible app. It'll be up on your screens as well as, as Uncle Dave and Onsley hold us down back there on the visuals. Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says this. Everything that I've been through, Paul says, right? I'm sitting in a jail cell, and I want to, to, to write to a church to encourage them. And in my mind, it's like, shouldn't it be the other way around, right? Shouldn't we be writing to Paul to encourage him as he sits in, in the jail cell? Right, but in verse 1, he says, if there's any encouragement in Christ, Paul says, I've already got my encouragement. I almost hear him asking questions. Hey, church in Philippi, do you know Christ Jesus? 
Because if you know Christ Jesus, then you can be encouraged in that. If there's any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, which we do, any affection and sympathy, Paul says, I want you to engage in that because that will make me so glad and complete. He says, complete my joy as he sits in his jail cell. Being of the same mind, here's this unity piece, right? We come together from, from our homes here in Orange County. Some of us travel from outside of Orange County to come into church service, right? And we all come with, with the, the, the burdens of our home life, our work life, our finances, our relationships, all those things on our backs as we enter in, into the door, right? But when we enter into the door, we are unified. We are one in Christ Jesus. And Paul says, hey, church, as you behave, as you engage, as you, as you flow out the love and the selfless service and the hope of Jesus, know that it only comes from your time in solitude and silence and prayer as you, as you enter into his presence. And how do we, every Sunday, enter into his presence? We do it through our worship gathering. We do it through the three or four songs at the beginning of service where the worship team says, hey, if you want prayer, come get it, right? I'm glad to see all the men are prayed up this morning. Uh, that's great, right? And, and it was, I'm just kidding, right? Um, but but that's, that's how we enter into our relationship with Christ Jesus so that we can flow out from that in service to each other. And, and, and Paul says, if any of that is taking place, church in Philippi, that we planted, we have a special relationship. We got this going. How did we get this going? Because of that guy, right? That guy that went to the cross and did that thing on that day. And then three days later, he did that other thing in fulfillment of the scriptures. And then a little while after that, this Holy Spirit was pulled up, poured out for us. And he's here with us, active and alive, working in our lives today. And we believe that. And because we believe that, now we come together and gather to, 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 to dig into his word, to hear more from what it is that he has to say to us, to worship him and to praise him and to do life with him and to, and to do life as he would have us do life with each other. Not, not, uh, uh, not as sinless as he was sinless, right, because we are, we are human, uh, though we have these, these awesome things that he taught us called repentance and faith. And so it is in that we get to come together. If there's any encouragement in Christ, if there's any comfort from love, if there's any participation in the Spirit, you and I, as we connect and smile on a Sunday morning, we're participating in the Spirit. He says, if there's any affection and sympathy, hey, brother, how was your week? Not so good. I'm sorry. Let's pray, right? There's affection and there's sympathy. He says, complete my joy, being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, not a Honda Accord, being coming together, right, and of one mind, right? Churches, back in the day, I don't know about you, but I've been geeked out on church history for like the last year and there's a couple of us that are that are that are church history geeks as well, and we and I started looking at just recently the King James Bible in 1611, and then and then back before that in the Geneva Bible, and then and then where did that come from? And then unpacking like the Roman Catholic Church, right? Catholic is the universal church, not the denomination, right? All the way back into in the Constantine and 300 A.D. There were churches popping up all around the place, right? all around Europe, all around Rome, right? So they all had to come together into a council to say, okay, church leaders, there were 320 plus church leaders that came together in a council to, to, to document what it is that we believe as followers of Christ. Some of you might know the output of the Council of Nicaea called the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Any former Catholics? right? So you're on it, right? You know it, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? And, and so they, they, they put that together to say in the essentials, there's unity. In the non-essentials, if, 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 if you want to believe that, that um, you know, it's a thousand-year creation day, if you want to believe that it's a pre-tribulation rapture or a post-tribulation rapture, we're not going to argue in the non-essentials because we have the essentials of the faith. Right, And so he says in verse 3, he says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. It's not about the personalities that are there. 
right? He's saying don't necessarily follow Paul, but follow Christ. Don't follow the other guy that comes in that's like Paul, that talks really good, but follow Christ. He says, he says how do we do this? How do we flow this outflow and complete his joy in this time as Christians and believers in Jesus? He says, in humility, we count others more significant than ourselves. Anybody see the Jesus Revolu Rev Revolution, right? Jesus Revolution, the movie, last couple of months. Remember when Pastor Chuck was washing the feet as they entered into the church? It's like, it, it, it blows my mind. How many church pastors would step down off their platform and wash the feet of the people entering the church so that they could be in community, so that they could hear from the word of God, so that they could serve each other and serve others. Hey, Pastors Appreciation Month, thank you so much for that. You tell me I'm awesome, I'm kicking it right back to you. Y'all are awesome, because I see you every Thursday. I see you every Saturday, right? I, 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 I see you uh, being the body of Christ and working in humility and serving others, right? And that cash app, God said I need to get that jumbo jet, just so you know. Just, I, got, I got to take this word. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Paul says, body, it's not about you. It's about them. It's not about you, it's about them. It's about him, and so it gets to be about them. And it's about you because he loves you. Because he loves you. And count others more significant than yourselves. He says, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. That's where our mind, that's where this desire comes from, this desire to serve the Lord uh, uh, if you if you if you've come to know the Lord and you had a you had a fire in your soul, right? And you said, "I got I got I I don't know what's going on, but I got to go do whatever it is that He wants me to do." You you know that over time, sometimes that fire kind of subsides a little bit, and so we continue to get back into the things that bring that fire back into us, and that is ours from Christ Jesus. Everything flows this way because of our relationship this way. Verse 6, it says, who, who, though he was in the form of God, he didn't count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Right? We, we know God the Father, God the Son, but Jesus, fully man and fully God, did not count himself to be equal with God. That's why he went up to the mountain to pray. That's why he went to ask God uh, for, for the things that he would petition God for, the same way that we petition God for the things that we petition him for. He says, being found in human form, he humbled himself. How? By becoming obedient to the point of death, even, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above all names. Don't do it, Natalie. Natalie's like, you're going to be on the worship team. You are worthy of all praise. And what sings? Our hearts will sing. How great is our God. That is who he is. So what I love is that the Apostle Paul, in his church cell, writing this letter to encourage the church in Philippi, I say in his church cell, in his jail cell, writing the letter to encourage the church in Philippi, is preaching the gospel to them. He's preaching the gospel back to them. Like they know this. They've been through this. But how many of us need reminders? How many of us need reminders? Every single day we need to preach the gospel to ourselves. He is the name above all names. Verse 10, so that at the name of Jesus, what's going to happen? Every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Every tongue confessed, every mouth will, will open. Every mouth will open and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This unity, this solidarity, is what Paul writes to them to exhort and encourage them through this time. They're worried that he's in prison, and he's worried that they're gonna, that they're like gonna just fall off the map because he's in prison, and so he's just bringing them back to the gospel. Do not forget the gospel. Another version puts it this way. Paul opens the second chapter of Philippians with a series of questions, right? He says, hey, does your, 
Does your life in Christ give you strength? Does his love comfort you? Do we share together in the spirit? Do you have mercy and kindness? If so, make me very happy, Paul says, by having the same thought, sharing the same love, and having one mind and purpose. For Paul, the church living in harmony, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose, that's our word for the year, those things completed his joy. Another translation says that he was truly happy. This kind of solidarity, this fellowship, and unity that comes from having a shared purpose and passion can fill hearts with happiness as well. Amen? On the screens, this will be part of your fill-ins as well in your bulletins if you're taking notes. We see in Paul's letter the encouragement of solidarity. The encouragement of solidarity. A standing firm in one accord. And we only do this when we get this relationship here first, and then it allows our relationship to go across to others. We're going to have a change of seasons soon again, right? It was, it was we, we're, we're just in the fall, and a couple months later, we're going to be in, in winter. And around this time of year, you're likely to see geese flying south for the winter. You know that, that story about, um, you know, they fly in a V formation, and uh, one, one side of the V formation is longer than the other side. You know why that is? There's more birds on that side. That's why. It's longer. <laughs> You'll get it later. It's okay. I tell Corey that joke from time to time. Um, there's a lot that we can learn from this formation of geese, believe it or not. The, the church could learn some valuable lessons as they wing their way to warmer climates, they often cover thousands of miles before reaching their destination. And sometimes it's fascinating to see what's been discovered about their flight patterns as well as their in-flight habits. By flying as they do, the members of the flock create an upward air current for one another, right? Kind of like drafting. Any race fans, right? Kind of like drafting. Each flap of the wings literally creates an uplift for the bird immediately following that one. One author says that by flying in a V formation, the flock gets 71% greater flying range than if they flew on their own, right? Sometimes our men come back into the pack uh, uh, to, to be loved on and, and prayed for in our men's ministry. It's because out there it's tough. And so it's like get back in the pack, right? Get back in the pack. Why? Because we can go further together, arm in arm, shield to shield, right? Arm in arm, shield to shield, because out there, things get a little bit wonky. Why? There's things working against us out there. And so when we're in community, uh, we, can, we can be working against those things together. Everything's better together. Ice cream is better with somebody else right? Everything's better together, right? There's, there's some things that are good on our own, but everything's better together. Another thing we, we can learn, learn about these birds is that those in front rotate their leadership, right? That's why we have a staff, right? That's why we have associate pastors and, and leaders, right? Because, because I can't do it all, and I don't want to do it all, and the Lord hasn't gifted me to do it all, right? When, when the lead goose gets tired, it changes places with, with one in the wing of the V formation, they just circle around. When one gets sick or wounded, two will fall out of the formation to go to the ground with the sick and wounded one until it's able to fly again, right? The geese in the rear, they're, they're, uh, they call it, um, I want to say quacking, but that's not right. They're honking. The geese in the rear are honking to let those in the front know that all is good. We can keep pushing forward. Everybody's got a job to do. Right? And so in Scripture, the Apostle Paul says, in your unity, everybody's got a job to do. And so what, 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 do, what do we learn, not just about the Apostle Paul and his circumstances and what he's teaching to them, but I, what I love about what, as we're diving into Scripture is what I ask the question is, what are we learning about God in these moments? What are we learning about God as we, as we, as we study God's Word? Philippians chapter 2 teaches us that God's gospel 
is going to be advanced in every single circumstance. God's gospel will go forward. God is patient and he perseveres. And that we have a critical part to play in the advancement of his kingdom. Right? Romans 8.28, you guys know this one. Somebody, some, somebody even mentioned it to me this morning. Right? God works all things together for good. For the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. And turn to your neighbor and say you're called according to his purpose. Go ahead. You're called according to his purpose. So the circumstances that Paul sits in in his jail cell is being served to advance the gospel. Your circumstances, whatever it is that you're facing today, is serving to advance the gospel. Why? Because we're talking about Jesus. Like I, like I stated before, when I was encouraged and told that there was a healing in serving others, believe it or not, you experience an actual chemical reaction inside your body when you serve others. There's a, a, a doctor, David Hamilton, he, he studied the side effects of kindness, and he found that when we do something kind for someone, that it causes elevated levels of dopamine in the brain, which is kind of like the heart's natural version or the brain's natural version of narcotics. And so we get this natural high, often referred to as helper's high. Put simply, doing something nice for another person makes you happy. And you think God wired our brains that way on purpose? I do. I do. And I think Paul would agree. He says that, that as we connect with God in this way, and that our relationship with Christ Jesus fills us to a point of confidence and security in our relationship with him, that confidence is like a bright, shining light to people that are still walking around in the darkness. Amen? Your, your confidence to speak to somebody about, about God in a, in, a, in, a, in a moment of hard times is like a bright, shining light. I had a friend just last week talk to me about some things, and I was like, man, that's an answer to prayer. Thank you. You just, you just lit up my day, right? It was a bright, shining light. And Paul says here in uh, Philippians 2, verse 12, he says, Therefore, this is, this is how we go. We're serving others as more significant than yourselves. He says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence but much more in my absence, he says, I'm over here, but you stay the course over there. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why should we do that? Because he is a great God, and every knee is going to bow, and every tongue is going to confess, and that is the Lord that we love and serve. He's not just our Savior. He's not just the good parts that we like to be wrapped around like bubble wrap. He is also a great God that will come again to judge, to judge. And so we work out this understanding with, with fear and trembling. He says, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So as we pray to come out of our isolation, right, maybe COVID has, has kept a lot of us isolated. As we pray to come out of those things, uh, it is through, his, through the power of his spirit that we are reconnected to be able to come out of our bedrooms, come out of our homes, come together in unity and in community, to love and serve another like we're going to do on Saturday at our Harvest Fest, to connect with a, with a, with a community that, that we are blessed to be planted right in the middle of, right, that maybe knows the Lord, maybe doesn't, right? Maybe they follow other types of belief systems, and all we're wanting to do is, is put them in a bounce house and give them a hot dog, right, and share the love of Jesus with them with a track, right, and, and, and get to know them. We, we are a light on the street corner. We are the beacon of light to the lost. It's in our mission statement, right? And so in the darkness, they can find us, right? But Pastor Barb and I talk about this all the time, about being one of those emergency response hubs for the community, right? And, and, and letting them know, like, hey, if, if you have some sort of major catastrophe, you go where? To church, and, it, and it, it, it just explains so much why even your, your agnostic friends or even your atheist friends, when they're, when they're in their deepest, darkest mess, like, hey, uh, Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Betty could die. Can you just do that thing that you do? 
Esther, you know, enter into prayer for that. Because inside our souls, there, there is an internal belief that there's something bigger than us. And we get a great opportunity to express what that something is and how they can find joy and rejoice in their circumstances. It says in verse 14, don't be hating. That's what it says. It says, don't be hating. Right? Oh, I guess I got to go to the church again and do all that stuff. It says, do all things. Some things? Come on now. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. It says that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom, um, among whom you shine as what? As lights in the world. Shine, ladies and gentlemen. Hold fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ I may be proud, Paul says that I didn't run in vain or labor in vain. We stood this up for a purpose. We come together in unity. Does life happen? Yes. Am, am, am I sitting in a jail cell? Yes. Right? But stay the course. Don't forget why we're here. It's all about him. It's all about Christ Jesus. Know him. Love him. Get that relationship straight so that you can operate in him going forward. Verse 17, it says, even if I'm to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, he says, I'm glad, and I rejoice with you all. Likewise, you, should, you, should, uh, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. We see in Paul's letter, if you're taking notes, that we all need to shine. We all need to shine. When we're isolated, Sometimes we just want to crawl under those covers and not, and not let any light in. And conversely, no light gets to go out. I want you to think about how many people operate around your light. You are a shining light for many people in your family and in your solar system, so to speak. And it shines brightly into them whether you think it does or not. You have unbelieving friends or unbelieving family members. You are the person that they turn to when they have a, when they have a need. Why? Because you've got that thing going for you. And they want to know what that is. right? If you've ever had an unbelieving friend just some, somewhere say, hey, tell me about this Jesus person, then you know and understand that the Holy Spirit is not yours to keep. Right? The Holy Spirit flows through you to give. And the Holy Spirit can flow through them as well. In Paul's letter, we have a, we have a, he, he tells us to shine like a light on a hill. Paul knew that when Christ comes again, the Philippian church would be joining him in heaven. Because he shared Jesus with them, they were eternally saved. And that knowledge filled Paul's heart with joy and happiness. And Paul wanted the Philippians to experience that same joy and happiness with him. And how would they do that? How do we do that? Right? By, by shining like stars in a dark world and offering the teaching that gives life. In other words, through our own Christian walk and testimony, we can share Jesus and we can share salvation with people. Jesus spoke about shining in um, Matthew chapter 5, he said, No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, everyone who lights a lamp puts it on a lampstand. Then its, its light shines on everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in front of people. Then they'll see the good that you do and praise your Father in heaven. They'll see the good that you do and praise your Father in heaven. Let's see how Paul finishes this chapter. In verse 19, he says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. Like Timothy was with me. He's been around. I hope he gets released and he can go to you, right, so that I too may be cheered by, by, by news of you, right? Paul wants to hear from what's going on in the church as well. He says, I don't have anybody like Timothy who will be genuinely concerned about your welfare, for they all seek their own interests, but not Timothy, not those of Jesus Christ. He says, you know Timothy's proven worth. 
how as a son with a father, he has served with me in the gospel. He says, I hope, therefore, to send him just as soon as I see how well it'll go with me. Paul says, as soon as I have an answer for my circumstances, I'm going to send Timothy back with some good information or bad information. We're going we're to send it to you either way. In verse 24, he says, I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself might come also. Paul is praying and trusting in the Lord that he will be delivered out of that jail cell. He lives in joyful expectation that the Lord will deliver him from his circumstances. And he prays that there will be a day, a day soon, that he gets to be in the presence of the Philippian church to continue to rejoice with them, to be reconnected with them, to be reconciled with them. In verse 25, he said, I have thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier and your messenger and minister to my need. He says, for he has been longing for you and he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. And he was, he says. Indeed, he was ill, near to death. God had mercy on him. And not only on him, but on me also. Because Paul said, I was worried for him. Right? He says, he says God had mercy on him, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Like, I, I didn't want my worry to continue and have that to worry about as well. Epaphroditus' uh, physical health. But the Lord delivered him and therefore delivered me, Paul says. He says, I am more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice in seeing him again. You need to know he's okay, right? And that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me, he says. So be of good cheer, he tells them. He expresses that to the church. He says, take no heed in the divisive nature of the culture. He says, rejoice in solidarity, in selflessness, and shining. In every church, in every generation, as we live in a fallen world, and we see that there are divisive influences, such as loyalties and conflicts that infiltrate the church and our homes through our own dysfunctionality, we find that the Apostle Paul expresses that in the midst of hardships, it's easy to point blame and to turn on each other. We may revisit this chapter uh, as we get closer to the election year um, because we want, it, we want to be reconciled in our faith. We want to point inwardly towards the Lord and not blaming of each other in those circumstances. Sometimes we need these reminders as we preach the gospel to ourselves every single day right, like Paul sent to the church in Philippi, to stay the course. He encourages the Philippians to agree with one another, stop complaining, work together, and he shows us how to live stressful, I'm sorry, he shows us how to live successful. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, he shows us how to live successful Christian lives, not stressful Christian lives. I'm going to invite the band back up as we get ready to come to a close. But uh, Psalm chapter 96 in verse 1 says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. I've been going back and forth in Scripture into the Psalms and out of the Psalms during this study. We sing to the Lord a new song in Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, it says. Tell of his salvation from day to day. And how is the salvation come to pass for each and every one of us? It comes through our relationship with Christ Jesus. In verse 3 it says, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens, splendor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory, do his name. It says, bring an offering and come into his courts, worship the Lord in splendor, in the splendor of holiness, tremble before him as we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It says, tremble before him all the earth 
Verse 10 says, say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. He is in charge. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. It says, he will judge the peoples with equity. It says, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the, pe and the peoples in his faithfulness. We're all faithful in the Lord, and we can rejoice in that. Amen? Will you stand with me today? So the ups and downs of life hit us at times. And I wanted to take a moment just to celebrate Natalie because uh, uh, she has, she has uh, gifted us with her voice for several months. Uh, and she, many of you know this, but she's going to be stepping back, if you will, from, from the worship director role. Uh, she's not going far. She's not going far. Uh, and we have a good a good plan for for our worship gatherings. Lo, uh, um, we have solid teams of people that have that have co uh, continued to to raise their hands for that. But I just wanted to take a minute to thank you for the last four months of of your your hard work and you know full time mom, full time wife, full time job, full time business, full time you know everything else that we try to throw at you. You know, so yeah, it's been it's been a a wonderful uh, experience with you. So let's give Natalie a round of applause, if you would. Uh, and and at, our, at our all ministry meeting in a, in a couple weeks, we're, we're going to talk about the state of, of worship ministry as one of the things that, that we talk about. If you have any questions, you can ask any of us at any time. Um, but if you would extend a hand while we pray for Natalie before we continue to, to, to worship our Lord. So, um, Lord God, I just thank you so much to come into your presence. And, uh, Lord, we, we extend uh, our hearts towards you in, in the worship gathering. And sometimes that's in song. Sometimes that's in our giving of our hearts. And as we, as we extend our worship, uh, as we serve and help others, Lord God, I just thank you so much for the giving and serving heart of Natalie and John that they have been uh, just faithful and steadfast uh, in ushering in your spirit every single Sunday, Lord God. And so, Lord, we just, uh, uh, we know that the, one of the constant things in life is that you continue to move, Lord God. And so we're just so thankful to, to be a part of, of uh, your body as you move, Lord God. So I just pray uh, for grace and uh, protection for Natalie and John and her family. Lord God, as, as um, we continue to come alongside her and she alongside us uh, in, our, in our service to you. Lord, the church family go, extends beyond these walls, Lord God. And we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, Lord, let us lift her up in these times and John up as well in these times, Lord God. As, as, um, uh, we're just so thankful to be able to, to come together in your name. And so we lift up all these things today, and we praise Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's Thank worship. You. Let's worship. Let's worship. Yep. I just want to say something real quick. I love you all. This has been a great blessing in my life. And I'm not going very far. I'll be back. <laughs> Probably like a few weeks. <laughs> but <laughs> I, we, I love you too. And I know that God has great things coming. He's coming soon. <laughs> That's right. So may the Lord be with each and every one of you. Debbie, Linda, Gregorio, 
Uncle Dave, Pastor Rudy. You guys are amazing. I love you, Pastor Barb. I got you. Amy, Tim, Cecilia, Paula, Hannah, and so many others. I'm. There's still people I haven't met. Raylene, Adrian, Rick was here somewhere. There you are. So we're a family. Church is not a building. It's a body. So we love each other, and we worship the same God who loves us right back. So let's worship him together. I love you all. God bless you. I've tried so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it, that you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. We give what we don't deserve it. You take the broken things. Raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, Lord. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated. In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all Amen Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving this is my victory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, Lord. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated. In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all When I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles come breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. Let me hear you. When I open us and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles start. 
Thank you, Dr. Greg, Phil, Dave Baker, Brandon, John Waldron, who isn't here today. God brought you all a band. And we're going to continue to worship Jesus in spirit and truth. So when you walk out these doors, love, search, re love, serve, reach, and disciple. Because Jesus wants us all to share the word. Doesn't matter where we're at, we're all called. We're all his people, and we are all called to serve him with a purpose. And that is to share the love of Christ so that not one is left when Jesus comes to take us home. In Jesus' name, amen.